Welcome to another tutorial from Lame Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about something that's changed the way I'm doing development work in Splunk, and that is using Splunk inside Docker. For those who have never really used Docker, and that was actually me up until a couple weeks ago, uh, just keep, think of it kind of as a virtualized application environment. It will virtualize different applications, in this case Splunk. And so Splunk will be virtualized, it'll be independent of the operating system. And the reason I like it for development work is I have built code, I build applications, and then when, I, when I'm on this development box, I'll make changes, and then I need to revert the box back to its original form, make sure none of my content is in place when I, uh, when I clean up. Otherwise, someone else could come along and try to build an app and their stuff will work. But when they publish it, they didn't realize they were using a dependency of mine or something like that. And ultimately, the application doesn't work. The concept is, if you got a dev environment, you got it all nice and set. You go in there and you make changes. It's making changes to local files in your Splunk. You want, with a Docker container, when you shut the Docker down, the thing disappears. And boom, when you start up Docker again, it's all clean. And thereby, you can test did my application truly work? Is it working clean? If I go put it up on GitHub, if I go put it on Splunk base, I go push it out to my deployment servers, etc. What's going to occur? Docker, make sure I always have a clean environment and it cleans up everything after I'm done. You could do this with a virtual machine. You can have your own virtual machine, snapshot it, install stuff on, then revert the snapshot. That's cool and all, but just the amount of resources it takes to run a Docker, it's really, really simple. And I'm hoping by demo demoing it here, you'll see some of the advantages. Um, if you're ever much in the development world, or you just really want a really lightweight Splunk instance that doesn't take up a lot of space on your machine, this is the way to go. So I've got here, you can just type Splunk and Docker in Google, and you'll actually come back to with a Docker page of how to do Splunk. I'm not, the instructions are really simple. Just follow the instructions to run Docker. Docker will run on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, etc. But here, this says it's going to download the uh, latest version of the Splunk Universal Forwarder. Uh, that's a misprint. If you do this Docker Splunk latest, it's pulling down Splunk Enterprise, your search hedge, your indexer, etc. Um, and that's good. So just ignore that little piece. That's a little caveat. If you're reading your instructions, all you really do is once you get Docker, you're just going to run this little command. It's going to download the Docker container from the internet. It'll grab the latest version. And that's cool. As they continue to update Docker, you can just, if you want to get a newer version, you just run that. New, newer version of Splunk, just run that command. You got the latest version. They give you the example of how to start Docker from scratch. It's a big, long command with all the different things in there. I'm going to show you something really cool. You can install Docker, but you can also install Docker Compose. And Docker Compose is an element of Docker. It's, it has to be installed as well. Just uh, Google Docker Compose. I'll probably put some instructions down in the help below. But the, it's really, really simple. Docker Compose allows you to take YAML files, uh, that's just a text file, and create your own Splunk instance or Splunk instances and then you just run this command docker compose up in the location of the yaml file and it will it will build the splunk instance according to your commands similar to what you're doing down here but it, it just to me feels a whole lot easier way of organizing my stuff and so i'm going to bring up with visual studio code my yaml file so if i'm here in my splunk files here's my yaml um it's just simple example here you just put in services Splunk, and it says, hey, where do you want to grab? I'm just grabbing the latest version of Splunk, just, uh, just like we just pulled, where we did that Docker poll. We're going to give it a name. I can name whatever I want. If I have more than one instance of Splunk, I would use, I can just call these out. I can make multiple versions all in one Docker, and so I can have a uh, search head and an uh, indexer and everything, each in their own container. But we're going to keep it really simple for now. And I give it a, we're just gonna have one instance, I'm calling it Splunk1, it's host name is Splunk1. I set here the environmental variable, accept the license. I'm putting in a really complicated password. You set your password. And here, this is the port that's going to be to your operating system and what that's gonna map over to Docker. So this is saying, use port 8002 and that'll be port 8000 on my Docker. I could leave it at 8000, but the reason I wanted to show this is, if you load up multiple Docker instances, uh, you, you'll have conflicts on ports. So you could have one as 8001 mapped to 8000, you have one 8002 mapped to 8000, so you have multiple Splunk instances and they're mapped 
to the proper port. And so you just change these ports so that they're mapped correctly. Um, so they don't conflict if you want to run more than one. And then I just use this little volume file here. This says, hey, when you install Splunk, grab the file here in Splunk files deployment client.conf. If we go look here, I've got a deployment client. And this says, hey, point to your Splunk instance, your deployment server instance. Here are apps. You'll see them. I've got a bunch of my uh, the log analysis made easy apps, the Splunk Sim, Event Gen. Um, anyway, if I come back, I, ca I can go look at this and I can go Splunk Files and back to my Docker. And all I'm doing is I'm saying I want to grab these different apps and I'm going to put them in there. And so I'm going to say basically from Splunk Files, go grab Lame Essentials. From Splunk Files, go grab Lame Analytics and go drop it in the Op Splunk Etsy apps. Op Splunk Etsy apps. So I'm just basically pointing all these files into where I want them to go. Oops, wrong directory. My bad, sorry. We're going to cut that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to point to the right file. This is this is me when I was learning it. I should get rid of that. This here, I found what works best is to use an ENV file. And that basically says you're going to give your stuff a number. So I'm going to say go look in Splunk files and this little Splunk app ID and install it there. Do a Splunk, go to my Splunk files and put it there. Well, if we go look at my EMV file, it's basically saying Splunk app ID one equals, sorry, Splunk ID equals lame essentials. Splunk app ID equals lame inventory creator. Splunk app three is lame event gen, analytic documentation, lame training, et cetera, et cetera. And so I've got all these loading up and Docker's just replacing these with the names from that ENV variable and file and thereby it's going to just copy those over. So when I get done, I'll have a brand new fresh image of Splunk with these eight apps and the deployment client set up. So let's run that. And I'm just going to press Docker Compose up. I could do a minus D so that you don't actually see all these messages and I get my terminal back. But it's kind of nice to make sure you see everything running in case there's an error. I, I When I first was doing this, I, was, I made some errors in my YAML file and it just... I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get my Docker working. So to be able to see any all the logs, it'll error if, it'll tell you the error if it's not working. But we'll let this just go hammer away as it sets itself up. And well, I'm thinking about it. I think I'll probably put up a uh, Git page. That's what I'll probably do is reference a, a GitHub page where you can just go download anything I documented here if there's any questions. It's nice to copy from the screen, but if you're afraid of copy, copy paste errors and things like that, um, that'll make things easier. But anyway, you'll reach this here where it says Ansible Playbook Complete. We'll begin streaming Splunk D. You're, and, until you terminate this Docker, this window's not going for any further. That's why people do the tack D on their command and then they'll get the command line back. But anyway, let's go and load up Splunk here. So we know that I have 8002. There it is, 8002. I press enter. And I'm in with all of my apps. And if I go and make changes, I put stuff in here. Say I go add stuff in. I modify these files, etc. When I close down the Docker and restart it, those changes will be gone. So if I add another app, when I come back, I'm only going to have these things back. Only the things that I call out my YAML file will con will continue to exist, and anything else will will revert back. It's basically going to be looking for whatever is in these files. If I want to make changes, I got to update these files that I'm loading in through that through this env file anyway i'm going to be doing more of these um dockers playing around with it so if not everything makes sense just keep watching some of the other videos on this but this was a really cool tool that i learned i learned this actually at a uh, splunk.conf and this made this has made a huge difference when i'm 
uh, developing. It's really frustrating to figure out. You think it works, then you pub publish it, and you find out you download it on a new instance, and you're missing a graphic, or you're missing this, because you had a you had historical data that was on your dev environment that you didn't recognize was there. And so it makes you think the thing is working, but when you publish the, the app, it, it fails or it doesn't work quite as intended. Anyway, so I really like this Splunk Docker. As a general rule, Dockers take up less resources than uh, virtualizing the entire operating system. And so it's just a really cool thing. My OS, I don't actually have, I have no Splunk running here as soon as I shut down Docker. All those resources are returned to me. And so it's a really cool, it's a really cool feature. Great for development, great for playing around with Splunk, getting to learn to know how to use it. Anyway, I hope this helps you move from being a uh, lame analyst to a Splunk ninja, and I hope you'll keep coming back and watching my videos.